Sydney Bridgewood. Hi, this is Pastor Darren here on site of Christmas Story Express, the mobile version. We are getting ready to uh, help launch Christmas Story Express. We have eight scenes that gives Jesus his life from when he was born all the way to his death. And uh, we had an opportunity this year to partner up with Pastor Tom and his wife Dee here in Otisville at Vision Point Church. What an incredible opportunity that we get to partner up with Tom with your church again. Uh, this is our first year of letting this go off and letting you guys do your thing. And I can't believe how far you guys have come. We see some of the scenes that are behind us that got brought over here a couple weeks ago. We unloaded it and now most of the scenes are up already, which is amazing. They're going to be doing this the first week of December, kind of like what we did last year, but we're going to pass this down to you guys. We are so excited, so grateful. I, I don't know what else to say except thank you, Bridgewood. None of this would happen without you. And we are really praying that thousands of people come and and more than that, their, their lives would be changed and would never happen without you. Thank you for your generosity and all that you do for the kingdom of God and just not reaching people in your area, but our area as well. Thank you for the love that you have for us. And I promise you, we'll do the best we can to reach people and you have a part in that. So thank you so much. Well, we're gonna be praying with you guys. We know this is a huge endeavor. It's a great opportunity again as your church comes together and uh, just to bless this community. And you're gonna see lives, thousands of lives Amen. come through here. God's gonna do an incredible work through your team and through your church and uh, just to see lives change for the kingdom. There's nothing greater than that. morning. What a great weekend to be here, isn't it? A good weekend? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, men and women that uh, have served in uh, this great country. And what a great weekend to celebrate you. We do that. And again, just a wonderful opportunity for us to just kind of dive into the series that we've been in over the last few weeks. We've been talking about made for this, what you and I were made for in our lives, not just individually, but really together as a church. And we've been looking at that. So if you haven't been here journeying with us, uh, you picked a great weekend to be here. Even though we're wrapping this up, you can go back, bridgewoodchurch.com. You can re-listen to this series, and it will help you understand a little bit more about Bridgewood and definitely will help you understand yourself because you were wired and made to do what we've been talking about and so for the last couple of weeks, we've looked at four core purposes that you and I are designed for. I don't know about you, but I'm a purpose-driven kind of guy. Anybody else out there? I just, I don't like doing things that don't have a purpose, like raking leaves. Is anyone, like, just about the time you get done raking leaves, the wind picks up and blows them all back in the yard. And uh, I, I kind of take the lazy approach, so we have woods that surround us, and so I don't pick up the leaves, I just push them into, you know, the beds, but then I, it, the wind blows and they blow all right back, and so we're in this war of going back and forth, and it just drives me crazy, because it's like, what is the purpose of doing this if it just looks this way? I don't know about you, but life can be like that if you're not living the way that you were made and wired. You can kind of feel like you get to the end of the day and you're like, what am I doing? Why, why am I wasting so much time? Why? And, and I would never want to live that way, and I don't think you do as well. But when you connect to your purpose and you live the way that God designed you to live, you will find an incredible amount of happiness and satisfaction. And that's what we've been helping you to understand. So week number one, we looked at we were made to experience God. Not just to know about God, but to experience Him. We talked about what that means, especially when it comes to our weekend services, that we hope that you've come and you want to experience a living God because He's here for us to experience. And then week number two, we talked about discovering community and that God never designed us to do life alone. He didn't design us to be off, isolated by ourselves, but to be a part of a community, a community of people. And that's what Bridgewood Church is, a community of people that you can do life with. And we're excited about that. Week number three last week, we talked about engaging our purpose. 
How many of you last week kind of put a few of the clues together and figured out that you do have some passions and some experience and some gifts that God wants to use within you? We talked about that last week, which was just great for people to understand that God is has given you so many things that he wants you to use. And so it brings us to week number four, and I'm just excited to be able to talk to you this weekend about living generously. Core purpose number four, you and I were made to live generously in the world. You know, the the reason that you and I can understand this is because we have a generous God. Hasn't God been generous to you? Come on, second service, help me out, all right? First service was clapping and excited. I know God's done something for you. I, I'm thankful he's been generous to me. And, and, and here's the thing is, is if we're made in the image of God, which the Bible says we are, then that character of generosity is who we really were made to be. We're made to reflect the character of God, in the image of God. And if God is generous, then he wants you and I to be generous. And and God, even though he owns it all, he, he wants to give it all away as well. And so what does it mean to live generously? We're going to talk about that today. And uh, we've been looking at Acts, and if you have your Bible, Acts chapter 2 is the beginning of the church, the early church, the church as we know it. And Acts chapter 2 tells us that this was part of the DNA of the first church, that they lived generously. I want to show this to you. Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse number 42. And you'll see there that they were committed to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. Those were regular habits of the early church. And everyone was filled with awe at the signs and wonders that were done. I mean, God was doing miraculous things. And then it says all the believers were together and had everything in common. And then it says this, notice now, they sold possessions, they sold what they had and gave to anyone who had need. This was part of their DNA, that they would live generously. They never saw what they had as their own But they saw it, if someone else was in need, they wanted to be generous with what they had. It's an amazing thing when you can do more than just talk about being generous, but you can live generosity out. And you can see that from Acts 2 on, that the church, this wasn't just a mission statement that was hanging in the church. This wasn't just an inscription on the building of the church, it was literally something that they believed in and they lived out every day in their life. If you don't believe me, just look forward into chapter 3. Like right after we read Acts chapter 2, you get into Acts chapter 3, and look what happens. One day they're walking to the temple, it says there, and, and John and, and Peter are there, they're walking, and here's what happens. This guy that's been lame from birth is brought, dropped right at the temple. And and he's begging. He's begging like like someone would on the streets. If you've ever been to a ball game before, been downtown Detroit, maybe you've walked by somebody that was sitting there trying to get a few coins or a few dollars. Well, this guy was kind of right in the entrance of the temple. And they're walking in. And, and, and he's begging, and I'm sure Peter and John did what I think a lot of us do, reached into their pockets. They must have been like me. I don't carry money with me. I don't have a wallet or money on me at all. And so they probably thought, I don't have any coins, no dollars. But look what Scripture says. But they turned to the man and they said, what we do have, we give you in the name of Jesus. How many of you know the living presence of Jesus is better than a few coins and a few dollars? Because that miraculously touched this lame man, and the Scripture said he jumps up on his feet and begins running and praising God. Now, I don't know about you, but this is proof that the early church, it was part of their DNA, that wherever they went, 
They understood that they were made to live generously. That God didn't bless them and give them what they had to keep to themselves. And, and I know some of you are thinking here, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm reading your mind right now, because God gives pastors the ability to do that. And I know you're thinking to yourself, if I had a little bit more, I, I'd be generous, Kurt. If I, you know, I just don't have a lot, that's why I'm not generous. But if I, if I did have it, I would be. And can I just tell you right now, okay, every single one of us here has something. Because generosity is not what we don't have, it's what we do have. Notice what Peter and John say. They, they say, well, we, we, we don't have what you might be asking for, but we have something to give. And what we do have, we give you in the name of Jesus. So generosity is not what we don't have, it's it's what we do have. And, and, and I know every single one of us here have something that we can be generous with. And, and the question that we need to ask ourselves is, am I being generous? Am I understanding that generosity is living life with an open hand? I want you to understand this phrase because I think it will give us a good word picture of what I'm talking about. I love the phrase open-handed. It is because if, if you have your hands clenched like this, okay, um, there's just one thing that drives me crazy. Actually, there's a long list of things that drive me crazy. But one, one of the ones that's at the top are, are people that are stingy. Okay, I, I cannot stand stingy people. And you know why? It's because it's the absolute opposite of the character of God. Like, God is the most generous person ever, and that's how he wants us to live. That's how we're made. So whenever we're closed-handed and stingy, we're, we're acting opposite of the character of God. Aren't you glad that God's not stingy? Aren't you glad that when God does something, he doesn't send you a bill in the mail? He doesn't just say, well, you know what, you don't really deserve it, and so I'm just going to give you a little. He always gives us more than enough. He gives us more than we deserve. I mean, he's generous, and that's what he wants us to be. And, and if we're, we're closed-handed, watch this, then we don't have the ability to give, but we don't have the ability to receive either. Generosity is living open-handed so that you can both receive and release. That's what generosity is. It's the ability to receive. If I had my hands full right now and you tried to, to give me something, I couldn't because I have stuff in my hands. I'm, my hands aren't open. But if my hands are free and they're open, I can receive stuff, but I can also give stuff. And so the early church understood what it meant to live open-handedly. And what they did have, they didn't see it as their own, but they saw it for the common good of one another. Pastor Caleb ended last week by saying, whether it's your talent or whatever gift God has given you, it's never just for us. Do you understand the things that God gives us in life aren't just for us? They're not meant for us to kind of hold on to and to be stingy with, but they're given to us for the common good of everyone. It doesn't just bless us, but it blesses everybody. And, and when you experience that, it does something in us that's remarkable. I, I just, it was an amazing experience. Uh, a few weeks ago to just go up to Vision Point and hang out with Pastor Tom and the team for a couple hours. We just went up there as a staff and just said, we want to make sure you have everything that you need. Uh, we just want to, you know, make sure that you don't have any questions or whatever. Just spend some time. And, and you just sort of saw that they were so thankful and so grateful. And, and, and when I walked away, I was like, it was like pouring gas and fuel into my tank. Because it was like, God, this is the purpose that you made us for. You've been generous to Bridgewood, not so that we could keep it for ourselves, but that we can share it with others. 
And there's a satisfaction and a fulfillment that comes in life when we live that out. It was like I walked away and I could just hear God saying, I'm pleased with, with what you've done as a church. And, and God is pleased when we live out generosity in our lives. And it's just part of our DNA. I, I think I've, I've told you this, but um, I grew up in a home that um, it was large, a large family. Uh, I had six brothers and sisters. And so maybe part of my wiring and my DNA was that uh, my parents did the best that they could, but there were many times where we just didn't have enough for them to buy individual gifts for all of us for Christmas. I mean, it, we just didn't have it. So a lot of times we would get one gift for the whole family. And, and I remember just, just appreciating that, that at least we got something, and we would have to share it together as a family. I know when we sat down for meals, the reason I get to the table first was because if you didn't get to the table first, there wasn't nothing left. I learned that early on, and, and, and it was for the common good of everyone in the family. It wasn't just take what you want for yourself. You got to think about everyone else and made sure, mom made sure that a casserole could be split eight ways. Because it wasn't just all, I could have ate the thing myself, but it wasn't just for me. It was for everything. And, and so that's just part of my experience and the way that I was wired. And, and yet that's the way that God wired us as a church, as a people, where we begin to understand this isn't just for us, but it's for the good of one another. Do you know that that's opposite of the way that the world thinks? The world thinks this way. This is my stuff. That's your stuff. You keep your hands off my stuff. I mean, isn't that what we do? I mean, let's just be honest. I, I mean, I do. This is my stuff. It's not your stuff. I worked for this. I paid for this. This is mine. And we live that way. Rather than thinking to ourselves, wow, God, you know what? If you own it all, then that means I don't own it. You own it. And so if you've entrusted something to me, who am I not to entrust it to someone else? And God just helps us to understand what living generously is all about. And, and my question to you is this. Am I being generous with what God has placed in my hands? Am I being generous? Whatever God has placed in your hands, are you being generous with it? That's the question I'm asking you. And I just want to spend a few minutes helping us to live generously in three areas. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. How many of you have heard that before? Just a, a way of thinking about it. God, I want to be generous with my time. I want to be generous with the talent you have given me. And God, I definitely want to be generous with the treasure that you have given me. So the question is, am I being generous with what God has placed in my hand? Let's take a look at this for a few minutes. What about our time? That we call it here at Bridgewood, um, our volunteers, we call them Team Bridgewood. So if you hear Team Bridgewood, all right, we don't have a professional football team or anything out there. Or a Team Bridgewood are hundreds of people that volunteer here at Bridgewood. They give of their time. They're, they're not... Uh, on a payroll somewhere or, uh, you know, they're not doing it for, for any other motivation or reason other than they want to serve and they want to give of the time. And, and there are some here that spend a lot of time doing their ministry and there's others that it, it, it may not be a lot of time, but they give whatever time they have to what they do. And I am so blessed and honored by I mean, the people that volunteer here at Bridgewood Church, I'd be honest and tell you that we would no way be where we are today as a church without people that have been generous with their time. And they have said, you know what? Um, here's the reality, is that God has chosen you to be on the team. Did you understand that? Do you realize that? Because maybe when you think of being picked for a team, that brings back some bad memories, all right? There, there, there's some of you that are already starting to twerk a little and stuff because you remember what it was like to be picked last or maybe not even to be picked at all. And so 
But, but here's the reality I want you to understand. God chose you to be on the team. He picked you to be on the team. Now, I know some of you are looking at me. All right, I don't know what's going on today, but some of you got the look on your face like, I'm not really sure about that, so let me show it to you in Scripture, all right, that God chose you. And um, he didn't just pick you like halfway through or pick you last. He actually picked you before first. And I'll show it to you and prove it to you in Scripture, okay? Look at it there, Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 10 says that you and I are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Do you realize that God chose you to be on the team before you were even born? Before you could even be picked, God picked you? So, so I, maybe that will bring healing to some of you that had a bad experience. Because I want you to know God believes in you so much, he picked you to be on the team before you were even able to be on the team. He said, I want you. And he prepared things for me to do and for you to do on the team. And, and I read that and I think to myself, if God chose me to be on the team, why would I not want to be on the team? Why would I not want to invest my time on God's team when he said, I created you to do this, which is absolutely amazing. Look at John chapter 15, Jesus' words. I, notice what he said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And I chose you so that you might go and bear fruit, that you might do good things. God said, that's how I designed you. That's how I made you. And when you're doing that, when you're generous with your time, you are connecting to your purpose. You're connected to the way that God designed you and made you to be. That's why so many times when you're volunteering, there is a satisfaction that comes with knowing that I'm helping someone else, that, that I'm giving something to somebody that isn't able to do it on their own. Why? Does that do that for us? Because we're connected to our purpose when we're doing that. It's an amazing thing. I, I think of Ephesians chapter 4, and it says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. For a lot of you, that would be the professionals, those that get paid to do it. But notice what the Scripture says, that he has given them to equip people to do the work of the ministry. Do you understand that God has given me a very specific responsibility as a pastor, and it's not to do everything myself, but it's actually to equip people to do what I do? That that is the, the way that he made us? And so I just want you to understand this, because sometimes I get people that ask me, I just want you to understand that when I'm not here on the platform, it's not because I'm trying to get out of my job. It's not like I'm trying to go, oh, I just need some time off. So you know what? I'm just going to go sit and let someone else do it. I'm actually fulfilling the role that God has given me, which is he said, I want you to equip people to do what you do, not to do it all yourself. I'll be honest with you. I'm wired that I could be up here every single week. I could be doing things every single week. And God says, that's not how you were made. That's not how I designed you. Actually, let me show you another verse. Might mess with you a little bit. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul's talking to a young pastor, and he says, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do a work of an evangelist, and discharge all the duties of your ministry. Now, some of you are thinking, man, I should have been a pastor. That's really cool. You get to just do everything that you do and give it to someone else to do. Do you, do you see what the scripture is saying here? This is, this is a pastor talking to a young pastor saying, here's what you're to do. Here's how you were wired. That you're not to be a one-ring circus that everything revolves around. 
that actually you're to discharge, you're to equip, you're to give away everything that you do so that others can do it. And if you do so, you're fulfilling the purpose for which you were made. And, and church, I want you to know that if you come here at Bridgewood, it, this thing does not happen by one or two people. This thing has is, is got moving parts in every dimension, and it's got people in all those moving parts all working together to make this happen. And so don't be fooled and think that whoever stands up here or gets the most airtime, obviously it must be the most important and things must circle around. That's not the way it works. That there are so many people that are volunteering their time right now to make this thing happen. And, and, and that's because they're being generous with what God has done and how he's helped them. So it's not just the time. What about our talent? What about the gifts and the talents that God has given us? I think of Bridgewood and I think of the diversity of talents and gifts that are here. It, it would blow your mind if you knew the people that you sit next to week after week and the amazing gifts and the abilities that God has given them. Now, here's what I hear often. A lot of people say, well, Kurt, the reason that I'm, I'm not using my gift or I'm not using the thing that I'm most passionate about or wired for is because I do that all week. And like, I want to come to church and I don't want to do that because I do that all week. Do you understand what we learned last week was that those are clues. Your experiences and your gifts and your talents are clues to the purpose and the talent that God has given you. And the reason they're clues is because that's how God wired you. That's how God made you. And he wants you to use that in every way possible. And so, of course, God wants you to engage your purpose and your talent here at Bridgewood Church, because that's how he wired you. And, and, and I pray and I hope that you will feel that when you are here at Bridgewood, that the purpose and the gifts and the talents that God has given you is a piece of the puzzle to Bridgewood Church that can only be filled by you. And it's very possible that none of us pastors have the gift or the talent that you have. And so if it's just going to be a few people that are responsible to do it, we're going to be missing parts to this body. And the reason we'd be missing it is because it's a position or it's a piece that only you can fill because you were wired that way. And so God wants us to use our experiences and, and our talents and our gifts and our abilities. Use what he's given you. Say, God, what talents are in my hand? Am I being generous with them? And then use them. I was, I was thinking about that. I was just thinking, God, am I being generous? I was asking myself. One of the things I don't think would be any surprise to you, I'm passionate about is food. Okay? I think you are a believer by now. I'm passionate about food. And one of the things I love to do, I love to be able to cook for others. I, I love being generous with that. I enjoy cooking for me personally because it's like a stress reliever. I, it's where I can check out and I can just cook and, and uh, do it. The guys here on the staff, they, they call me the Bobby Flay of Bridgewood because um, I just like to cook, and, and it, I'm excited about it. And I love cooking for others, and especially people that love to eat, okay, because it's just fulfilling to me. It's satisfaction to me. But I just said, God, I want to be generous with the things that I'm passionate about. And I knew right away when we were launching the, the season of life groups, I told my wife, I said, I want to do a life group, but I want to use my passion for food. So, of course, my life group revolves around food. It's around the world in six meals. So we, we go to a different genre of restaurant. We've been to Mexican. We've, we've been to, here we are last week at Maggiano's, all-you-can-eat, seven-course Italian buffet. Like, keep bringing it, bring it on. Yes, that's Andrew Alley looking, going, this is my third time 
uh, that they brought out. Seven courses just keeps coming. But you know what's amazing? Is that God can use what you're passionate about, and he can use it in a way that's so much greater than what you and I think it is. How many of you know there's a lot of great relationship building that happens around the table? Like that's the center of community and conversation is around the table. And I just say, God, I want to use whatever abilities or talents or passions or things that are in my hand. I want to use it to help others. The book that's out there, we didn't write a book because of talent or ability. They actually said we need a couple of imperfect parents to share their failures. I said, I can do that. I got plenty to give to that. And just contributed a part, but I knew when we did that, that I just said, God, I want to be generous with this. Well, it'd be nice to keep for ourselves or to help in some other things, but we just said, no, that's not what our heart is. Our heart is we want to help other families, and so we did. I'll tell you the story. I was at the Secretary of State. How many of you dread going to the Secretary of State? Okay, especially when you get the little lunch meet ticket number, and it's like number seven, and, you know, they're, they're, they're on like um, 65 of the last set of tickets you know, that you got to do. And so I'm sitting in there. It's jam-packed. I mean, I'm thinking I'm going to be in here for a while. And I'm sitting there, and um, a young um, military guy walks in, probably in his mid-20s. And he walks in, and he has a service dog with him, uh, just a beautiful German shepherd. I mean, you talk about just an incredible dog on command. And he comes, and he sits one seat over from me. And I'm watching him, and I could tell right away he's struggling with PTSD. He's shaking, he's tremoring, his leg is is tapping. I can see tattoos all over his arm from the army and different things like that. The dog had a dog collar. It looked like his dog tag around the thing. And you could just tell he was just uptight. He was having a hard time being in that crowded room. And the next thing you know... Um, one of the workers from the, from the Secretary of State walked over, and I think they were going to make him leave because he had the dog with him. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not happening. And I can keep my mouth closed to a certain point, but like, I'm like, if he says, he walks up and he's like, uh, excuse me, sir, uh, what do you have the dog there for? It's like, hello? Did, I mean, it wasn't hard to figure out what he was struggling with. And you could tell this guy was very nervous to say out loud in front of everybody what what he was struggling with. And so thankfully, the lady kind of turns that isn't even related to this guy and says, "Uh, he's struggling with PTSD, all right, just it's okay or whatever. And and this guy's like, well, okay, if that dog starts making some noise or whatever, we're just going to ask you to go, you know, stand outside to myself. And I'm sitting there, I'm watching this, and I'm thinking to myself, this guy gave generously. Of his I don't know what his story was. I don't know what the traumatic things that he went through, but it was obviously clear to me that he is having to live this out now in his everyday life. And I know that I'm going to go back and I'm not going to struggle with that and I'm going to be free and I'm going to have dinner with my family tonight and all of that because he was generous in doing what he was doing. And I said, God, help me. I want to help people like that. And when we look around us, church, there's always needs around us. The question is, with what God has put in our hands, are we willing to be generous to help others? And say, God, whatever gifts, whatever talents, whatever abilities, would you help us to think about others? And then what about our treasure? Our time, our talent, and our treasure. I love that God has given us resources and things not only to be a blessing for us, but to be a blessing for others. Here's what the scripture says, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 10 through 12. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed, and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Watch this now. You will be enriched or blessed in every way so that you can be generous 
on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Here's, here's what I want us to understand today, church. Generosity is not an amount, it's an attitude. Generosity is not an amount. It's not, well, you know what, if I give this or if I, if I do something really big, then that means I'm generous. No, generous is an attitude. That whatever's in my hand and whatever God has blessed or enriched my life with, it's so that I can be generous in other occasions. Like I can look around me and go, well, God, I can help in that area. I can give in that area. I can serve in that area. And here's the amazing thing is that it's open-handed, which means not only can I receive God's treasure, but I can release God's treasure. I I was just so proud of our 501 young adults here at the church under Pastor John's leadership, and they just said, you know, we want to live generously. How many of you know um, the generation that our kids are growing up in? They're not being taught in the world to be generous. And I love that our 501 students stepped up and they said, you know what, we heard of a need and We don't want to just talk about needs. We want to live generously. And uh, this woman, we told you the story, was kind of trapped in her house. She's been uh, really attached to a wheelchair uh, because of her health issues and wasn't able to get out of her house in Pontiac because she didn't have a wheelchair ramp. She tried to get the city to build a ramp for her, but it was just like this incredible, ridiculous amount of money. And so our 501 students stepped up and they just said, you know what, there's a need and we want to live generously. We're going to go and we're going to trust God for the resources so that we can build her a ramp. And for like three or four days, 12-hour days working into the night, they generously gave of their talent and their time and their treasure so that this woman could have a ramp built out of her house And here's a look at what happened as a result of that. Take a look. Hey, Bridgewood, this is John Rakowski. I'm here with our 501 Young Adult Life Group, and we are working on a wheelchair ramp for a lady that lives here in Pontiac, a family member at the church that has multiple sclerosis. and She has not been able to leave her house on her own in case of emergency for quite a while now, and that's a really dangerous situation. And she's gonna be able to leave her house by herself for the first time in a very, very long time. And we're just so excited to be able to meet this need. This is just what we are called to do as a church, to live generously and to bless others. are working on getting the railings up and then she's gonna be ready to come out and use the ramp it'll be the first time that she leaves her home in just over two months I know she is so excited to get some fresh air and we're excited to see it as well so we're getting close we're almost there we can't wait to see her reaction
many of you know that's how we were wired? To look around us in a world that is full of needs everywhere we turn. And to know whether it's our time or whether it's our talent or our treasure, God has made us to live generously. And church, when we're living generously, we are so connected to our God-given purpose, the way that he made us. And um, we are entering into a season here at Bridgewood that probably is one of the greatest opportunities we have as a church to give. There's something that happens between Thanksgiving and Christmas that there are so many needs that you become aware of. I, I don't know what it is around the holiday time, but it just triggers for people. A lot of people struggle with discouragement and depression. And I mean, it just kind of seems like life just piles up on them. It can be a very difficult season. But for the church, it can be one of the greatest seasons because we're the hope of the world. We're, we have the answer. We have the solution. And, and, and it's an ability for us to rise up as a church and to give back to those that are in need. And church, this many times is just some of the greatest opportunity we have. I don't want you to think because Christmas Story Express is happening in someone else's yard that God isn't leading us into. We have actually um, just really finalize the Christmas story experience that's going to happen through the entire month of December. Just imagine Christmas Story Express experience every week on the inside. Week number one is going to be live animals here and there's going to be a, a, a nativity that people are able right right here inside Bridgewood. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Second week you're going to come and everything's going to be transformed in our gallery into the market. You're going to be able to walk right through the market and be a part of it. And so you and I we know people that have driven through Christmas Story Express and have seen it from a distance. But to experience it firsthand can be life-changing. And we're asking everyone. I I just was praying, and the Lord just said Christmas is for everyone. Everyone. And God just really challenged me, challenged the people at Brisbane. Everybody knows one if not multiple people that have driven through Christmas Story Express. They're your friends, they're your relatives, they're your coworkers. That you can easily say, hey, you enjoyed that. Oh, it will be back next year. It's going to be amazing. But what about coming to the experience and experiencing it in a, in a different way? And you can bring them with you every single week in the month of December. And then our Christmas Eve service this year is just going to be absolutely amazing. I, don't, I can't even give it away to you, but it's just going to be unbelievable. It's just going to be an, an amazing time of being able to give back to the community. So I'm challenging people over the next few weeks to begin getting on the phone, begin calling, begin handing out invite cards. We're going to have a, everything available for you and set you up through this uh, month of November to just go and, and say there's somebody, there's somebody that needs this hope. They need a relationship. They need an experience. I want to give it to them. Would you stand with me? Monday night, I was with our board of directors, and we were reviewing our finances. And um, this year, like most of the previous years, um, we have, up to this point, we have given more than we were intended to give. We, every year we've set a challenge as a church that we would give um, over and above 10% of all of our income that we would give away. And then every year I challenge that by 1%. So this year we're supposed to be giving 12, 13%. Uh, percent. Well, we're, we're, we're above that by, by quite a bit. And yet we have a couple weeks of Christmas still left to go. And they, all, of the, all of the budget for that is gone. We gave it all away. And um, 
I don't ever want to apologize for being too generous. But I do know that when the church in Acts had a need, that there were people that just stepped up and said, you know what? Um, we can live generously. We can give. Over the next couple weeks, everything that we're going to do with Christmas Story Experience and into um, our, uh, our Christmas Eve services, you know, we estimate it would probably be about $7,000. And I just prayed, and the Lord said, just put the need out um, to the church just one weekend. And, and God said, I'll supply. Uh, I'll take care of the need. And I'm not pressuring you. Uh, Everything is going to go on. But I'm asking you, if you're here today and God speaks to you or God shares with you, this is how you can live generously and you want to help. Whether you're giving on the app or you're giving, I think the guys are going to be at the doors as you leave. If you just write Christmas Story Experience, everything that's given will help us to cover the next few weeks. Um, and, and that God would, would supply and, and would help us to reach more people than we've ever reached. And, and uh, if you can do that, you can help on your way out. You can, you can do this right here, right now. You can just say, God, I want to be generous, and you can help us out. We definitely want you to leave and definitely begin to look around you and find people around you that you can give generously to. We want you to join the team here at Bridgewood. Church, you were meant to be part of this team. And you were meant to engage your purpose and, and to use it here at Bridgewood Church. And maybe that's your step today. You're ready to say, you know what? I'm ready to be on the team. I'm ready to give. Church, this is how he wired us and made us to be. And so we're going to sing. And I'm going to pray over you as you go. But here's what my prayer is. Is, is they're leading us for a moment. Here's what I'm just going to ask you to lift your hands and say, God, am I generous with my time? Am I being generous with my talent, my gifts? God, am I being generous with the treasure that you have blessed me with? And allow God to speak to you. God's going to speak to you. He's going to show you things. He's going to do some work on your heart. Just let him do what he wants to do and then listen to him and obey him and step out in faith and do it, okay? So as they sing, I want you just to do that. Would you just lift your hands? Would you just ask the Lord, God, show me and speak to me? And then I'll come back and pray for us as we go.